Today's video is brought to you by Honey and Bespoke Post. Hey, hey brother. brother! And welcome everyone to Super Carl and Brothers. Today we are going to give our full spoiler review of Pixar's newest movie, Luca. Here we go. I don't know about you, but I totally have all the songs from The Little Mermaid stuck in my head today. You know, I don't not have them stuck in my head. Look at this stuff. Isn't, Isn't it, it neat? <laughs> yeah, it was like, right, right. Okay, so I have to tell you. Right so, away. Right away in Luca, there were, I had a bunch of movies that I was like, man, this is really reminding me of this. And this. Same thing. Like, I literally, like, I didn't know what you were writing out for your review notes, but at the bottom, I just wrote down movies Luca reminded me of. Yes. That's, yeah. It's literally the very top thing that I have on my yes. list here. Okay. So, well, let's compare. Let's compare. Let's compare. Let's compare. Okay. okay. How many? Hold on. I have one, okay. two, three, four, five. I have six movies that uh, I thought it was, one, that they're very two, clear. Three, four, I also have six. Okay, okay. okay. Let's, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start. I have okay. Little Mermaid, because we I just have, discussed yes, it. Yes, Little Mermaid. So this is this is sort of like the fact that you have creatures under the sea collecting things from above the sea, which by the way, the things that those two dudes had on their fishing boat, I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> why, why do you have a loose deck of cards sitting on a table with a record player on a boat? Do you not know how boats work? Right, also the clock. It's yeah. just like a random like actual alarm clock sitting there and it's like, Maybe, the, were they sleeping on the boat? I don't know. Maybe they were sleeping on the boat, but it Maybe seemed they like were. they were working their way out to like kind of far away from the main fishing area over to like the island. Let me tell you what, if I'm living the kind of life where I sleep on a boat, like that to me seems like the kind of life where it's very relaxing. The last thing I want is an alarm clock. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what is this? You put the alarm clock on Who, the boat. Why? We're not bringing it. Why do we Why do we live on a boat if not to avoid alarm clocks? Exactly. The exactly. sun will wake us up. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, I thought that I didn't understand it. I was, but the one thing I, I think that I did notice possibly maybe is that the record player might be the same record player uh, from Up, Carl and Ellie have. Oh, from Up, could like, be. Uh, they have like the. I think they don't, doesn't the family in Onward have a record player too? Cause Ooh. they have like a, a record of the, uh, who is it? The jazz musician that Joe was trying to join up with. Yes, you yeah. are absolutely correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. Easter eggs on Easter eggs there. Yeah. Uh, which, funny you said Onward, because that is another movie that this movie reminded me of. Same thing, same Onward. I mean, the dad of Luca was basically almost like a copy and paste of the centaur cop stepdad character from almost, onward. Almost literally. Yeah. Almost literally. And even like the the kind of like relationship with like the mom and the son. I mean, I feel like in onward, the mom is a little more like- She's a little cooler. Go get him, Junior. Yeah. Uh, whereas this mom is a little bit like, we like, be here all I the will, time and always. We'll protect you from everything. Yes. Which brings me to my next one, Coco. Coco, yes, I have it written down. Yep. Very, very similar. I thought Miguel and Luca reminded me a lot of each other, but then also sort of the family dynamic of like, these are the rules and we will stick to them. Yep. And I will take away everything you love to keep you safe because I love you. It's like, well. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except in this particular instance, I think that there is maybe like a, a slightly more valid, uh, like, reasoning where there is actively a town that has a giant statue of like sea monster hunting. There is that, Like yes. going on. So the fact that they are concerned about him going up to the surface and out to the human world, like there is, they're, they're not completely off base for no. that being a potentially dangerous place for him to go. True. Uh, but the fact that we're gonna send him to like the deep with like <laughs> Uncle Hugo or whatever, um, I was like. Could, could you punch him in the heart there? I was like, what, what is what happening here? Yeah. <laughs> that whole scene was like a fever dream. It was like, <laughs> like yeah, because. What? Uh, no, well, did you watch through the, all the credits? I did. He okay, so too. there is the post credit scene, which I'm glad there is, because otherwise that scene is just like, here's a threat we don't follow through on at all with. Okay, but I have to say on that note though, the fact that they, like they start underwater and eventually like Luca leaves and they basically never return to the water again for the rest of the movie at all. Basically. Right? I, one of the weird things I wrote down about it is that if you were to just watch all like the marketing, it would seem like the fact that they're sea monsters is gonna be sort of the main premise of the movie. But I would say the fact that they're sea monsters really sits backseat to just about everything else. Like it's like, yeah, I guess they are also sea monsters, but you know, that's not really what it's about. Like that sort of like introduces like the final little bit of conflict of like, we we have like a hidden secret or something, but 
really, and this is really change much i don't yeah. think no i i know what you mean yeah it's like the the plot of the movie is is like competing in this like kind of triathlon yes. event the it feels like the the race the tri whatever the porto rosso cup yes is the highest stakes part of the movie not the fact that they're sea monsters exactly yeah. exactly so and i think i think there's a couple interesting things going on there because i do think that there's yes. like a big like layer of marginalized people and maybe not being like accepted by others and mm -hmm. that sort of like it's sort and maybe that's even part of it is the fact that it's like it is subtly a part of them but it is not like they are still they are, they are still just like people out there doing things. I think that's the genius layering they have going on here. They're like, you'd think, you'd think that's all you know about them. But in fact, the fact that they're sea monsters really doesn't matter at all. It's oh, like, yeah, that's the point, isn't it? That's yes. the point at the end of the movie. It's like, oh yeah, so, right? But, yes, yeah. absolutely. And and that's, yeah. And there is, there's one brilliant shade of this that I thought was like so awesome is the like idea of judging a book by its cover mm -hmm. is um, Julia's father. Yeah. They did something awesome with him i thought we're like you see him and he's this like big hulking like fisherman Urgh, guy who yeah. like, cuts fish in half with like a cleaver and like you know like whatever and you know he's like missing the arm and he like you know just i mean he just seems like you know a tough guy a monster fighter monster fighting town whatever yeah he was just born without an arm just born without, you think you obviously think he's going to have lost the arm to a sea monster to a sea monster or a shark or out fishing fishing or you know some boating accident grizzly right you know Ain't said no. No, nope. just, just just a guy. Yeah, and it's like it's like oh, I see what you I it's, did I I made that assumption about this man. It it is a very good move, and it's just very just like I came into the world this way, and you're like oh, and it's it's like there's there's a whole lot of just like these these things that otherwise might like be the thing you know that person for just don't matter. They're still they're still just people. They're still just people. Yeah, yeah, and like you see him out there, and he's like clearly found like all these different ways to just be able to continue to do, and right. I mean, continue to do, just always have done the things that he does the way that he does them. I gotta see what this guy's workout routine is though, because he is like looking buff. Or, he, he is, he's pretty know, beefy. He's missing, pretty beefy. Missing an arm. Yeah, but, yeah. Whew, um, okay, so. It. Doing get, good. Can, continuing on our list, I don't have as good of a segue here. Another uh, another title that I had written down is Inside Out. Yep, Inside Out. Uh, specifically the, the dolphin. dolphin. Yes. yes, okay, I was like, they stole that from Bing Bong. They completely did. Yes. Like, there is a theory to be had somewhere. That was exa I know, my mind was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Why is that? It was the exact same thing. I was like, I'm sure they're just, I'm sure. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. Who knows? Obviously, we're going to make a theory out of it in some fashion. Right. It's like, it's kind <coughs> of like, like it, it feels, if it, it's so, I mean, it, like, I think if you were to put the, the images side by side of the mom making the dolphin impersonation and Bing Bong. Yeah. Like even like the the kind of like wide eyed like expression that they're making, it's exactly the oh, same. Oh, it's exactly the same. And I, yeah, I, it's like at Pixar, did someone just love that animation and suddenly it was like the same person and they were like, oh, I'm going to guess what I'm going to do. Or was it just like, do we have, was it like a placeholder and then they put it into like the screening room and they're like, no, leave that in. That's funny. Well, and it's the funny thing too, is that she's bringing it up because she's sort of like talking about like the, the neighborhood, the underwater like neighborhood, like, uh, maybe rivalry amongst yeah. like the mom and like the neighbor mom <coughs> or something right. where it's like, oh, she thinks she's so great, but like anybody can do a dolphin impersonation. See? Yeah. Uh, but although the only thing I would say about that is it's, it's a plot line that, that like, never goes absolutely, never goes anywhere at all. Oh yeah, that you, did they win the show crab festival? I, I know, the I, show crab, it's, it's like, we need to, I bet there's a short about that. I can oh, completely see it. Yes, like, I bet it's you're like right. The show crab short. festival, here we are. Now yeah. we can finally see that scene. Right. That was teased that we never, that we never came back to. Mm. But so even that though, it's another weird thing with Luca. This is like, as you're sort of being introduced to the character, like he, okay, this would be my next one, is I had the good dinosaur. Yes, I also have the good dinosaur written down. No freaking way. I'm not, look, right here, good dinosaur. Well, I mean, they very much just also, like the good dinosaur opens and they like show you all this like agriculture stuff and this is how the family does things and yep. all the, the kids in the good dinosaur have to go do their chores and Arlo sort of like the one who's not as competent and stuff. We sort of like the wimpy kid. And I would say Luca seemed perfectly competent. He did, but yeah, yeah. It was a very similar vibe to Arlo feeding the chickens when he's like shepherding the sh sheep fish around. The sheep fish, yeah. yeah whatever yeah. I'm gonna call him. There, there yeah. is a film called the sheep head fish. I don't know yeah. if that's supposed to be like a, like a, like a nod to that or not. Mm -hmm. But like even like the sort of like bugged out eyes that the fish had reminded me a little bit of 
Who was the one chicken that? Henrietta. Yeah, Henrietta. That's a, that's a bit of trivia Footless right there. Fran. <laughs> She's only got one foot. <laughs> Yesterday you said Footless Fran was. <laughs> She's only got one foot. Like one of the best parts of the entire Good Dinosaur movie. Great. Um, Good stuff. Where was I going with this? Oh, so yeah, like Luca is he he leaves the house in the morning. He's he's clearly like gotten up late and the, the sheep have already gotten out or whatever. So he's like gathering them up. He's like walking down the street and he's like saying hello to all of the various like, you know, neighbor people or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it felt like, it seemed like some of the members of the community were kind of like annoyed with him. Like he's kind it, of like the, like, yeah. Like village bumbling kid who's always like causing mayhem or being clumsy or klutzy or something. Yeah, that was surprising to me because, uh, yeah, you're right. He was going past and they're just sort of like, oh, hello, Luca. And it was like, what? he seems like a perfectly nice kid. And he's not, he's not even doing a bad job with what he's with doing. With the sheep. He's not like knocking stuff over. Right, like he's yeah. not like young Hercules who, you know, goes out into the square and it's like every time he shows up, just knocks over an entire plaza. Right. Or whatever. Uh, it's just, he just seems to be going out, but then he also seems incredibly friendly. Like I actually related to Luca the most <coughs> in that particular situation because I feel like that's like that's how I would go. I'd be like, "Good morning, good morning, good morning, hi, how are you?" Yeah. And he, yeah, you have randomly one neighbor who's a little salty, and then the other one seemed to just be like, "Oh, hi, Luca." Right. And yeah. It was also very kind of like um, Ian vibes I got there from onward. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just sort of like the bumbling, like, "Oh, hi, yeah, I'm very polite." Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like maybe a little nervous. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I have Onward on here. Um, did I already say this? I think we already said Onward. Okay, well, so I had Onward for two reasons. One being that I thought that um, that Luca reminded me of Ian, and then also that Alberto reminded me a whole lot of uh, Barley. Yeah. Um, because you've kind of got this like, like older mentory type of character who's like, who's like, I know what to do. Let's you know right. whatever. But like, also most of his stuff is like kind of founded in like nonsense. Right. You know, so it's like it's he's like, sort of like stumbling forward correctly for all the wrong reasons. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's like, like he's super like confident with everything. Yes, but, very much so. Uh, and then ultimately you, you have a very similar kind of like disappointment that comes like later in the story yeah. in a very similar sense. Yeah, where like Barley is upset that Ian doesn't think very highly of him despite the adventure they've had. And now Luke is spending more time with Julia, even though Alberto's his best friend and they're gonna to tour the world on their Vespa. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. I exactly. love how, yeah, that's like, that's literally their whole motivation for the whole movie is just like, get a Vespa. Like, when you consider that some Pixar movies are like, w the world has ended, humans have left Earth. I'm a clownfish traveling the whole ocean yes. to rescue my son from humans. It's like, this is, Two kids want a Vespa. Yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's like low stakes, guys. Very low it's stakes. Like, also, yeah, the other thing too is they they want a Vespa, so they're going to go and compete in the Porto Rosso <laughs> Cup, which I am fairly certain is a marketing scheme by the lady in the in the town who sells pasta. Yeah, it's like brought to you by yeah this pasta company. It's like because then you like literally have like the pasta eating element of the race itself. Right. Which, by the way, the fact that the one guy, uh, er, er, Ercole? Uh, yeah, Ercole. I think it's it's supposed to be like uh, based out of Hercules somehow. Oh, like, interesting. Okay. Ercole, yeah. Ercole. 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 The bad guy. The bad guy. Yeah. I felt like he was a little, a little too like on the nose <coughs> of the bad guy. Like where he was like not only a jerk, but he had like his little like henchman who he was constantly like you know, like, yeah. like, do my bidding. It was weird. I couldn't quite place him. I was kept trying to think like who he reminded me of. And I was sort of like getting like Chef Skinner, Anton Ego vibes a little bit. But really, I, I think it was mostly that he was reminding me of Gru from Despicable Me. You're right. Yeah, it which almost, is not a Pixar movie. Not a Pixar movie at all, yeah. but you that is almost like a young Gru is yeah. almost like what you're seeing mm -hmm. with that character. But I mean, this kid, for one, there's a couple of like <laughs> odd things that happen. Like one of them is that he's like clearly like won the Porto Rosso cup, like year in, year out, like over and over and over again. Yeah. And in this one, there's like the little moment where she's like the pasta lady is like, aren't you a little old to be doing this? And he's like, never too old or whatever. Uh, like, I can, of course I can keep doing it. But it's also like when he was younger, he was still winning it. Yeah, yeah. It's like 
certainly because I think he's 16 in the movie and he's won it five times. So like when he was an 11 year old, he must have won it. Just fair and square. Just fair and square. Well, yeah. who knows? But well, I mean, the thought <laughs> is it seems like he would only have the clout once he's at least won it once. Yeah. So it did seem like maybe the collection of the henchmen would have come later. But that kid, there is one scene in particular where he is literally riding down a huge slope in the rain, standing on the bike, facing Throw backwards, throwing a spear. Yes, yes. I was like, he okay. He deserves to I win was the like, dang cup. Like, not for nothing, but the kid is really good on a bike. He's got moves. <laughs> He's you know got what? moves. He was very, in a way, kind of like Gaston esque. Okay, Where I can like, see that. He starts out at the beginning of the movie and he's very much just like, he's obviously a jerk. Yeah. But for the most part, like, eh, not not harmless. I don't want to say that. But like, he's clearly just a jerk. But then by the end, it's like, oh boy, this guy is straight maniacal. Oh like, yeah. Because let's, let's back up. He throws a spear. Like, he is actively trying to murder Luca and Alberto. Yes. Yeah, that's like, ooh, he really crosses the line there. But he is very capable, which is also similar to Gaston. Like, It's a very good like, point. Like, don't, I mean, Gaston basically wins the, well, I don't know, the Beast isn't really trying for the first half of the fight. That's but true. he does wound him and he does get some serious blows in. And right, is, right. is a good hunter and stuff. Right, and, and he, yeah. he has <laughs> like, maybe like some well-earned clout mm -hmm. uh, where it's kind of like, you know, he's like this war hero or whatever. He's like the most admired man in town. He's able to rally all the other people to like come with him. Right. Um, so yeah, there's 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 a lot of that with, with that particular character. But there is like, I think one thing I've maybe taken a little bit of issue with over the years is characters that are just so decidedly one-sided. Mm -hmm. Like there, it almost felt like uh, there, there could have been some kind of reveal about why this character behaves in this way. I honestly was, I, as the more I was like writing down my notes, I was really surprised something like that wasn't in there because the other real big theme I thought throughout the movie was how like, like loneliness can come from anywhere. Yes. Right? Because you have like Luca, who is surrounded by family, but it's clearly very lonely and has no friends. Right. And you have Alberto, who's been literally abandoned by his father. Right. And is very literally alone. And then Julia, who I guess is the like a child of divorce, it seems like. It sounds like a child of yeah. divorce or, or, <clears throat> or at least split parents separated or something. Separated parents or something. Um, but in a, in a similar sense, it's like she is only staying with her father over the summers, which it sounds like maybe it makes it hard mm -hmm. for her to like make friends. Right. So it's like she shows up every year. She's part of like the same annual tradition, which the whole town celebrates in this great big way. But like, she's not there long enough to ever like establish these like friends that she's like coming back to. Right. And so, yeah, again, she she basically finds herself to be an outsider. And right. so it, it felt like that's exactly where it was gonna go with Ercole is that he also was going to be like, the, like, the reason why, what you're witnessing with him is a different, like more confidently outward kind of loneliness. Right, like his dealing with it wasn't to like try and make good friends. It was like to, you know, yeah, boost his own ego by being the best at stuff. Yeah, something. like like almost something along the lines of like, <clears throat> I couldn't make friends, but I could win this race. And by winning this race, people liked me. Exactly. And so like now it's like I cling to like it is the most important thing to me. Right, yeah, is, they, I, I do think it was missing a little, not, not, yeah, like a little bit of backstory on Ercole, or, or whatever, I can't say, I, his, I can't name. say his name. They also, they all pronounced it with like such heavy Italian accents and I was like, what's his name, Ercole? I know, Ercole? I know. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that could have given us an extra layer as well. Cause I, the other thing, and like I said, yeah, like I don't like these polarized, like they're like a one note, just like bad guy, because I just don't think that that's how people are in the real world. Like mm -hmm. everybody out there, it's like there is, everybody out there is who they are for some reason. You know, like they've had this series of life events that have led them to this particular situation. Right. Um, so I, yeah, I think a little bit more depth with that character would have been really nice. Um, speaking of, of how everybody was seeking, talking with like the, the big Italian accents and stuff, uh, one thing that I think is absolutely true about this movie is going to be very quotable. Yeah. Like the, like the, the Santa Mozzarella. Like, <laughs> like she, everything she said was always like, uh, like a cheese. Yeah. So it's like Santo Gorgonzola, I think was another one that she said. Julia, what did she say? Julia. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I was missing out on that then. Oh my gosh, no way. I, I love those. Okay. Yeah, they, they felt like expressions. It was like stealing that for that's sure. That's like her swears or yeah, cheeses. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's fun. Or cheeses. And then the other one is the uh, Silencio Bruno. Yeah, Silencio Bruno. I 1000% 
that Bruno was going to be revealed to have been Alberto's father. I feel fairly certain that that if nothing else could be a theory, yeah. that, that is what what is going on. Right. But I feel like what you probably have with that situation is a father who was telling him things he could not do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like the reason that he's come up with this particular saying of like Silencio Bruno is like, he's basically saying like, I'm not listening to you. I can too do it. Right, do this, this person has been telling me I couldn't do things my whole life and then he left me. Exactly. Right. And now I'm doing these things. Right. And I'm like chasing it around. And that's why he's like kind of like reckless and stuff. Right. Which to me makes sense. But yeah, there was there was no confirmation, at least that I saw in the movie. No. There was. Did you, did you notice at one point on one of the Vespas they made that he had like a picture of like a guy? Like I, I thought that was going to be maybe his dad or something. Yeah. And it's hard to know. Uh, and it's funny because we're bringing up all these different things that the movies were based off of when I think the director is actually listed. And I can't think of what they are now, but there are three movies throughout history that are um, like Italian influence that the movie is based off. OK, of. uh, Ooh, so okay. it's entirely possible that the picture that we saw in that particular moment is like a director from one of those movies, a character from one of those movies, okay. maybe be. maybe even like who um, Alberto is based off of. Oh, I think Alberto is based on the director's like real life best friend as a kid. Okay. I think so. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was fun. The other, uh, the other title that I had written down though, that this movie reminded me of was Moana. Oh, I didn't write that one down. Okay. So I thought you had, it. it was the, um, the idea of like the grandmother who sort of like understands and oh. sees. I understand why your parents are like kind of uptight and stuff, but also like, go do it. Yeah, like, like I got you covered. I got, yeah. And, and so in a funny way too, uh, they allude to it very early on in in the movie. I think she makes a comment like, I, I won a game of cards there last weekend or something. Yeah. Um, but the idea that basically the grandmother has been a regular Right. On, like surface side, so to speak. Yeah, I thought it was funny when it rained at the end that some of the other townsfolks were already sea also monsters. Also sea monsters, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which that whole situation unfolding, I thought was, was I, I had two sets of feelings about it because on the one hand, basically, it's like, it's like obviously the climactic moment of the movie. You've got everything coming together. You've got the entire right. town all like in the town square. They're all realizing all at once that these two boys who have been, you know, around all summer or right. in fact sea monsters they're standing right next to again the sea monster hunting you know statue, statue in yeah. town um and so on the one hand i absolutely loved how quickly the town's people were just like oh we okay. misunderstood like we misunderstood you know like we this whole time we thought that you were dangerous and it turns out that you were just sweet young kids like all the other kids that are running around the right. plaza and i was like amazing like that's it's so great to see it but i'm also like that was, they came around really fast. It was, it was like, you're right. Like I, I loved how quickly everyone was accepting, but it was like so fast as to almost be a little unbelievable. Yes. In some ways, like, like even if you completely accepted it, I feel like you'd be like, but can, I do have questions. Right. Like, wait, so y'all are just right there? Y'all are in the water? The whole time? Everyone, but you're basically humans? Okay. Should we talk more about how this? How does it work? Do you, how'd you turn it? How do you, well, how do you look like a human? Jay, let me stop you right there. Cause I feel like, you know what? It's, it's, it's time. I even have it ready. I oh, have it re I'll, look I'll at that. What? I thought he had notes on there, but now I see I have been deceived. Hey, howdy, hey friends. And welcome to the scenic route, which today is brought to you by Honey. But before we get into it today, as ever, we've got to hide the honey. Done. Okay, but for real though, honey, like we all shop online, right? And we get to the little checkout counter and there's that little tiny box that says promo code and you're like, I don't have one. It's just that they're telling you like, oh yeah, we do have sales available, but no, we are not going to tell you what they are. Good news is Honey does all of the hard work for you. It is a shopping cart tool that automatically scans the entire World Wide Web for the best coupon code and automatically applies it. Me personally, I recently saved $15 on a set of string lights for my backyard, which meant that I have a well-lit backyard and $15 cash in my 
card because who even carries cash? The other thing that I love about Honey though is that even if there isn't a promo code, it makes you feel assured that at least there wasn't one you were missing out on. I personally use it whenever I'm shopping online and I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't. So if you wanna check it out for yourself, you can do so by going over to joinhoney.com slash J versus B. Again, that is going to be joinhoney.com slash J versus B is absolutely free. Downloads in just a few seconds and you're already saving money. Link is in the description down below. Well, as ever, while the Ben is away, the J shall play, and he is going to be sad he left today because today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post, who is rolling out their summer-themed box of awesome, and today they've got a gourmet popcorn box. And by gourmet, I mean it comes in these little satchels of popcorn. I mean, how fun is this? These are different kinds of popcorn, and, and... It comes with duck fat to cook it in. That's ducks and popcorn, guys. It's like two of my favorite things. Let's go. Okay, I've got the duck fat. I have never used this to make popcorn. I'm afraid of spilling, so I've got this giant piece of it. Whoop. Whoop. That feels like enough. I'm going with the mushroom kernels. I like to put in a few to know when it's ready. There we go. my fork, which is gonna come in handy because it also comes with fun seasoning. I've got the garlic parm here. Mmm, they're really good. And great news, if for some reason popcorn is not your jam, Bespoke Post still has you covered. From travel and outdoor gear to breezy summer styles and grooming goods, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. And if you're not sure what you want, then you can just take the quiz at boxofawesome.com and your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. Although if you want my recommendation, I am personally eyeing the Retreat Box for next month, which comes with a hammock for some sweet summer relaxation. Plus it is free to sign up and you can skip or cancel at any time and you get 20% off of your first box when you go to boxofawesome.com and enter the promo code SUPER. Again, that is boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER to get 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com, code SUPER, link is in the description down below. I got some. As we, as we continue to like, kind of like start to understand this movie better and like the, the deep lying like lore of it is what is the magic or whatever that is involved that that specifically turns these sea monsters into human people yeah. upon exiting the water? Right. Like, it's sort of an odd... It, yeah, there's just sort of like, this just happens. Yeah, it's. I mean, you and it's easy to accept it. Like, that's no problem. Right. These um, are the rules. Okay, I got it. Right, right, right. I'm with yeah. you. But it is. It is almost like, but why? How do they turn into people? Yeah. Um, or even like there when he was learning how to walk... It's like, oh, my tail's gone. It's like, yeah, it's called Phantom Tail. And it's like, by Phantom Tail, do you mean your tail disappears or that the tail is now invisible? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is there like a mist around you that is making you look like a human, but in fact, you are not a human? Right. Um, the other thing uh, is the, like, it, it seems like just application of water in any capacity. In any capacity. Just, just immediately brings it back. I know, but then you're like, how does like sweat work or something? Or sure. do you just not sweat because you're... A sea monster. Well, the other thing is when they go out fishing with um, Massimo, which is the father. Yeah. And I'm like, they would have gotten, I mean, of course they do. They do get wet and they have to like hide it. But I'm like, when you go fishing, you get wet. Like, yeah. Like a it bunch. happens. Yeah. You're going to be reaching in the water. There's mm -hmm. no there's no way he's not seeing it. I thought they found a comical number of ways to get them wet. Yeah. To they get did. everyone wet. <laughs> Just like, man, people are getting wet all over the place here. All right. Although I'll tell you what, I tell me what you thought about the scene where the parents come up and they start playing uh, soccer, and they just knock all the kids in the fountain. Oh, I thought it was way too aggressive. I thought it was, yes, maybe a little aggressive, and also, like, either you've come up to the surface a lot yourself, or are way too good at soccer. Oh, sure, you know? sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had that exact same thought, too. It was like, what's up with this? Like, are you just like a little like, little soccer bro over yeah, there? Yeah, right, what's um, happening here? Yeah, that, that felt a little bit off, um, like, in terms of just like, you know, these are people who have supposedly never come up before, and now all of a sudden they're just like blending in, no problem. Right. You know, whatsoever. 
Uh, whereas, like, when Luca came out, you know, he had to learn how to walk. Right, yeah, you like, know? hey, you, you just sort of knew how to walk. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, so, they've been up here before. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> almost had a little coffee spill there. I almost, I almost revealed a little bit of sea monster. Yeah, on my, yeah. Out, <laughs> out of myself. That would've been yeah. bad. Um, but so, okay, that's another thing with the parents. I had, I had a couple of complaints about the parents. One of them was that I thought that it was just, f like, way too rough. Like, the way that they were just sort of like, are you my kid? Nope, okay. It was like, yeah. it's like, this is a little, this is, I don't know. But the other thing too, is that Luca has been gone for a while. Like, for a while. Like the fact that, I mean, I, I guess the extreme links they go to is that they came surface side to look for him. And based on these people who have been established to basically never come up from below. Right. Maybe that, maybe that is extreme links, but like <clears throat> it, it is unbelievable to me how long Luca just successfully gets away with just like, not being around his parents. Well, how long, how long is he up there? Cause is the race only like three days away or something? It seems like they watch you see <clears throat> them or you watch them wake up on the little treehouse fort. Like, I don't know, three or four times at least. Yeah. And with the first day being the day that they wake, they wake up and it had like rained throughout the night. Yeah. And so they had to like dry off or whatever. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I don't. I don't know how much time it's supposed to have passed, or if at some point in time they said how far away. I thought they. I thought they said three days, but that doesn't seem like enough time for Luca to have trained on the bike to be as good as he was, considering that Urkele is good enough. Has clearly spent so much time on the bike that he can ride it standing up backwards with a harpoon. With a harpoon, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's like, yeah, the, the level of skill that he needed to pick up and how quickly is yeah. substantial. Now, to be fair, he's been swimming every day, all day for his entire life. So maybe he does have insanely strong leg muscles and it was just a matter of learning the bike. Okay, well, this was, that was the other thing too. Is I was 100% sure I was like, oh, I see. It's a swim and then a bike. It's like, these guys can outswim anyone. Of course they're gonna, but right. no, it was like, it was never in the conversation that they were gonna use. Yeah, they, they were gonna swim. Right, they were yeah. gonna swim. It's like, clearly that will be their secret advantage. And then like, Luca's gonna have, have a big lead that he's losing fast on the bike or something. Right. But like, oh, but he's, but look how much he's learned how to ride the bike in just three days. It, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, he's gonna be so far ahead that the fact that he's behind on the bike would be more than plenty time to, to scoot. Right, to, your like, head to, start will win out. Will win out, exactly. Yeah. So that's never a thing. And then interestingly, I also thought with Hercules, like two henchmen, I thought it was very interesting how they completely switched, like stature wise, how like- the, Oh, like, who was gonna do what? Who was gonna do what? Mm -hmm. Like the one kid did like the swim all like olive oiled up and then the other one was like the, like the prized eater or whatever. Yeah. And it was like, it. I mean, it's totally fine, but it felt like it was like, oh, that's interesting. They like definitely chose. Yeah, like you would you would have you maybe would have expected the larger kid to be the eater. Big, yeah, sure, yeah. sure, exactly. Uh, but so they didn't go with that. I thought they that was didn't. funny. Yeah, a lot of switches. The the olive oil thing I did think was kind of like <clears throat> random, especially when the sea monsters would have such a leg <clears throat> up. Is that they? It's, it almost seemed like the detriment of Hercules' team was that they doused him in olive oil, so all the fish like. Ate came him. up and yeah. bit him, mm -hmm. and it was like, or we could just take advantage of the fact that they're sea monsters, right? And can just out swim them, right? Like, that also, that's that not going to be how it goes. Then he like walks it underneath the water. Like it doesn't seem like that should be what a weird thing to be allowed into this contest. It doesn't seem like this contest has many rules. It does not seem like it. No, you know, for for a, a a pasta marketing scheme, I guess I kind of understand. It it's it's okay that it doesn't have that many rules, except that they put so much emphasis on the winner. Like it's such a point of pride. Right. You know, it's like, it's a very big deal to win, but like winning, what, you know, rules be rules. Cause you're right, like, because like, aren't you a little old for this? And it's like, no, I'm not too old. And it's like, you're the one running the tournament. You can just say, yes, you are. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't have to let him compete. Right. Also he's so clearly cheating. Like he dumps the olive oil on him in front of everyone. And then he's like standing behind him, like shoving pasta in the other kid's face. Like, that's not a lot. Like, why are you letting him get away with these things? Right, it's like they You're have to use watching him do it. They have to use the fork, remember? We see we established the rules. They have yeah. to use the fork because remember they were struggling because they didn't know how to use a right, fork because they were the other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which one thing I thought was funny with that was later in the, uh, like they eat that way in front of um, uh, Juliana and our 
Julia, Julia Massimo. And yeah, Massimo. And then later Massimo does like, yeah. he's like, he's like, mm, I do, I get the appeal. I, I get fun. the, yeah, yeah it's, it's look at this. Um, oh, but okay, so that was, that was another one that I thought was sort of interesting was the development <laughs> of the relationship between Alberto and Massimo, where mm -hmm. like for some reason it seemed like Massimo was just like, why don't, why don't me and you go out on the boat today? And like, we'll, we'll right. go, like, we'll go, it's like, it didn't really seem like there was anything specific about it that would suggest that he would take Alberto and not Luca, Luca. or just take both of them. Right. You well, know? they both go out with him on the first day. Right. But then and like, then... It, it seems like it's almost like a, like a, it kind of works in like a twofold way where you have Alberto who definitely is like missing, you know, this like the father, father figure. figure. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's great that like Massimo is stepping in, but I don't know that it's exactly that he is knowingly stepping in mm. like with- Yeah, like, do you think he knows something like, these kids are, does, do you think like he is aware like these two kids are, something's up? I. That is almost what I'm forced to believe. Yeah, is yeah. that like that Massimo has a lot more understanding of like everything to do with the entire situation and is like giving them, you know, like what they need in turn right. almost. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that they show us that on screen, but I liked the character of Massimo so much that I want that to be true. I, I think it could be at least true. Maybe he's completely ignorant about the sea monster thing. Sure. But I think, picked up I think he totally that. picks up like, maybe these kids are a little more on their own than they're willing to admit. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Like give them give them some support. Mm -hmm. um, that I thought was, one thing that I thought was really well done was almost like the, um, the jealousy that it seemed like Alberto had with uh, Luca and Julia spending more time together. Yeah. Because it did seem like that was like a very, it was like a very like friendship kind of jealousy. It, like, it was, it was like a kind of jealousy. I don't feel like you get to see portrayed a lot, right. but it was very real. It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I remember as a kid frequently having the situation where uh, my, my childhood best friend moved to a different school. Yeah. And I remember going to the first birthday party after and all of the other kids that were then there were all now from, there was me. New school. And then all the new, like, and so, you know, it's like, this has been like my, best friends since I was like three and right. all of a sudden now I'm like in this weird situation where it's like I am the outsider amongst right. all these people but like I have known this person longer right you know so I, I related to that in like a very oh, yeah. way it was like a very like FOMO kind of feeling yes. but it was also interesting like how uh Alberto and Julia's characters like both appealed to Luca in the same way like I think you know, when Luca first gets to the surface, Alberto is like, yeah, I know pretty much everything. I know how things work up here. Yes. And he has this sort of like blind confidence toward it. But then it turns out like when he spends time with Julia, like she actually knows what's going on because she's just a human who lives in the world. Right, right. <laughs> he He's has like, like, yeah. <clears throat> like, has an education. <laughs> right, has an education. And I think part of that is like, it feels like she's like very much stepping into all of his territory in terms of not just friendship, but like my whole thing is knowing stuff. And it's like, now you know this stuff. I'm like, ugh. Right, I have it. But there's another really interesting thing about it is like it's like the idea of accepting an unfamiliar idea. And yeah. Like, uh, like I think for Alberto, he's <clears throat> struggling with this a lot. Like he has like determined based on like everything he knows that like the stars in the sky are fish. Right. You know, and it's like it's like all of my life experiences have led me to believe like that this is the case. Right. It's like it's the best conclusion I can come to. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like, no, 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 like there's, there is like an actual researched explanation as to what those stars in the sky actually yeah. are. And it's like, let me tell you what those are. Right. And it's like- I've looked with telescopes, there's books. Right, right. Yeah. It's like, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It's like, like are you kidding? Are you, do you hear yourself balls of gas? Okay, it's fish. It's fish, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's Don't be so, ridiculous. Right, and that's exactly it too, it's like, it's like they do both sound equally, equally ridiculous. Right. It's like based on what you know about it. It's like it's like could they be fish or balls of gas? Right. Hmm. It's like okay. Well, present your case. Right. Right. Go. More likely fish. More floating, more likely fish floating around mm. up in the sky. Hmm. Although let me tell you, the I thought all Luca had like a big daydreaming, like part of his character. Yes. Like he just spins off in the daydreams like four or five times. And I thought the daydreams were all like, I felt like it was Pixar just like flexing their animation. Sure. On all of them. I was like, okay, let's have fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. get wild. Well, we're in for a wild ride. Yeah. 
Which, uh, yeah, it's totally the case because they were like slightly psychedelic. A little bit. Um, yeah. yeah, pretty pretty vivid. Very, yeah. I mean, um, I thought the animation was insane in the movie. Like another thing from The Good Dinosaur I thought was very intentional was there's another shot of like a branch with leaves coming down, looking out at the water. Oh, sure. And like rain running down it. And I was like, that is exactly from The Good Dinosaur. I mean, it's a different, it's a different branch with leaves, but I that has to be a reference to that. Uh, I wonder if that's like a like at Pixar, like a, a kind of like lesson. It's like, how good can you make a branch look while it's raining? Yeah. Because we love it. Because we love it. It's like, there's nothing better than looking at a branch in the rain. I mean, I remember seeing that in The Good Dinosaur, just like, how are they doing this? Right. This is insane. It does feel, it feels really wild. Yeah, um, but I would say The Good Dinosaur, the main, I feel like the big critique every, like everyone had was like, the animation and the nature is insane, but Arlo looks pretty cartoony. He does. It's sort of weird, but it feels like they had the same level of like detail for the animation on like the water and the nature and stuff for this. But like, then you have so many people and characters that are all in this like sort of weird cartoony, that like it, it felt like it fit a lot better. Sure. In this one. Yeah, it, it definitely felt like it came together. There there was almost like a, and I, I don't know how to describe it in words, but like almost, it felt like maybe some version of like almost claymation style. Oh, yes, it did. Like it definitely felt like the animation style was borrowed from like Wallace and Gromit or something. Mm, mm. Like, um, yes, yes, it looks like claymation stop motion animation, except they were like, but instead of clay, we'll just draw it that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Or yeah, animate there's that. that. I think it's uh, yeah, I thought it was gorgeous though. There, there's one scene in particular, I think, when when Luca's daydreaming about going up to the surface, and you, he's just like dead center in the middle, and he's like moving up towards mm -hmm. like the break in the water. Yeah. That that was like my favorite shot in the entire movie. Oh like, really? That one was like like trapped. Or yeah, something. yeah. He's like kind of like trapped below the surface. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Um, stepping outside of the plot a little bit, there's a little bit of a conversation to be had about how we were able to watch this particular movie. <clears throat> oh yeah. Um, Cause this is the second Pixar movie in a row that was just available with your Disney plus subscription. Yes. Um, following Soul, which came out on Christmas of 2020. Right. Um, and it was kind of interesting because it doesn't seem like Disney as a whole has really been able to figure out like what they want to do in regard to how to release these like um, feature films. Right. Because like we've had, you know, Raya and Cruella, which were both like you had to pay and for Mulan. And yeah. Mulan, which were yeah. premier access. You had to pay like the additional fee in order to see it. And mm -hmm. you've had Soul and Luca, which were just like, these are just it's available included. for free. What is, what is Black Widow going to be? Do you know? I think that's behind. I think it's, I think it's premier access and yeah. then it'll also be in movie theaters. Ah, that's the difference. It'll also be in theaters. Yes. And so you're right though, because for Soul, like they just released it, but was, and it was like, oh, that's Pixar, not Disney. Maybe that's like a Pixar decision. Yes. Or or who knows, maybe behind the scenes, is that just some like beta testing things? Or, or is it just a matter of like, well, it's COVID, so we're just being nice. Right, like we're just like giving, like yeah, you know, giving it's you this Christmas. experience. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, and so I, it was very interesting <clears throat> because in my mind, and I'd be very curious to know what the people at home think on this particular topic. Like, I feel like this is like my question of the day, uh, which is odd because it's not so specifically plot-based. But when I found out that it was gonna be just available with your subscription, personally, I was very pleased. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's really cool. That means more people can watch it. Like, it's just more readily available. And for whatever reason, that, that whole idea to me is completely in keeping with like Pixar. It, like, I agree. Like, for some reason, it's like, it, it, it would feel weird to me if Pixar was behind a paywall, but it doesn't feel weird to me that Disney is just right. because of like Pixar's like brand reputation or something like we care so much more about the quality than the money. We want, yeah, it's like we uh, want you to see our movie. Right, is, yeah. which I'm sure they very much care about the money. <laughs> well, I mean, in order but, to, for an operation like but this. Of course, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it is important. Yes. But, um, Right, so my, my question though is that what I have since read, so my, my initial reaction, it just fit perfectly with my perception of Pixar and I was like, okay, this just feels like the Pixar thing to do. It feels like the, um, it feels like a, like a real shared, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it, just making it as available to as many people as possible. It feels, right. it feels like in keeping with what I would expect Pixar to do. Uh, but I actually was reading a little bit that it sounds like maybe there was a little bit of turmoil with Pixar towards Disney feeling as though 
the lack of paywall almost gave Luca this like straight to DVD type of like vibe where mm. it's like it's like you are not giving us that like prestigious badge of like this is like something worth paying for. You are basically just saying like here's a movie in case you want to watch it. Right. It's like you know because there is there are certain movies that they make just to release on Disney Plus. Sure. Exactly. You know? like, yeah. Uh, I think Lady and the Tramp was that way. Well, you know? and with with all of with all of the uh, various streaming platforms available now, it's it's just not uncommon for there to be wildly <clears throat> popular series that are just all included with your that are just part of a package. streaming thing. Yeah. Like to date, like you know, I don't think Netflix has had a situation where they like dropped a title and it was like you have your Netflix subscription, but if you want to watch like this new series that we just made, like it is like a bonus charge. Just, just like you know, letting you know. Oh like, yeah. So far, anything that they've that they've made Netflix original series has just been available. It's just part of Netflix. Yeah. So my question to you guys at home would sort of be this: like, is the fact that there was a lack of pay paywall did that affect what your perception of the quality of the film? Did, did it like affect the way that you like took it mm. in at all? Right. Because to me, it really didn't. Like, you know, I think, and maybe it's just because Pixar has such a reputation for making such quality stuff. Yeah. That I wasn't hung up Yeah. on that. And I was like, cool. Like now we get to see it. More yeah. of you guys will have seen it. Right. Um. So that, I think that's like a very interesting conversation and probably where we're just a little bit in the wild west as far as like how things like this will work. Cause we're sort of, yeah, like right now, like on the, the, what feels like the re-emerging end of COVID, you know, knock on wood, um, <laughs> where it's like, like right now, movie theaters still aren't really like fully back right. at the moment. But you want to think like a year from now, hopefully they will be in it. It'll mostly just be back to normal. But in that scenario, then does Luca even come out on Disney Plus? you know, or on release it, day. Right. Or, does, or it, does it just like, it's in theaters, you know, like th then what's this? Cause I would, I would have guessed that what would typically happen is that it comes out in theaters and then the same day you can buy it, buy it for like on DVD release or something is the same day it shows up on Disney plus. That is exactly what I would have thought as well. <clears throat> and the other interesting thing about it too, is that COVID sort of aligned with the uh, creation of Disney plus anyway. Yeah. So there, there wasn't a whole lot of like existing protocol that happened before. Yeah. Um, and, and like kind of on an interesting note, it almost felt like with black widow in particular, they like, they really seem to like hold that one back where it's like, we're gonna wait. Like we want to wait until we need to see. It's like, like, which makes me think that Black Widow is going to be extremely good. Very close to it. Uh, we're very, very close, to, close to it now. Um, so anyway, tell us all of your thoughts on that. My question for you, Jay, is yes. where do you rank this movie? Like I know we we discussed an enormous amount to do with it. Like, <clears throat> did, did you like it? Oh, I very much liked it. Okay, cool. Yes, cool. yes, I did very much like it. Uh, I know we're sort of like nitpicking little things here. Um, I. I know, let's see. I know we normally give a rating. I, I don't know. This is just gonna be like my, my enjoyment rating. Like how much I'm gonna, and the number that keeps coming to my mind is 88. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's, it is actually, I would say it's higher than mine. Oh, okay. Um, but, and it was like, I <clears throat> think for me, it's, there was nothing, uh, there was almost nothing that they did that I specifically took like so much issue with. It was almost the things that they didn't do mm. that I thought could have made the entire story better. Like the Urkele backstory Urkele, redemption something. Yep. Yeah, even yeah. I think in the beginning, another note that I had about Luca was like this, like for him to be what I, what I think of as like an Ian situation from onward, you know, like a teenager -y type, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of like coming of age tale type of thing. Um, I like, for him to have never wondered about going to the surface before, it was yeah. almost like it just like came to all at once in one day and he went to the surface right. and just stayed there. Right. You know, and then like ultimately committed. It was like, I feel like if you could have had like a little bit more understanding about like his back end to know, like this was like a kid, almost like Moana, who like always looked at the coastline, you know, like right. who was always drawn to the water, like who always wanted to go to go beyond, or Nemo for that matter. Yeah, like, I mean, there's like a whole song in Moana where she ages up about don't go in the water. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's one where it's kind of like when Moana goes, you're not like, you're not like left wondering, like, really? Like all of a sudden you just decided to like go like, out to sea? Yeah, like, 
You're just like, it, it, yeah, because it would have been weird if you're like, if you thought she had never considered the water before. Right, it's like Moana never drank the Kool-Aid. You know, like yeah. she followed the rules, but she always wanted to go anyway. Yeah, but she always disagreed with them. <laughs> right, it seemed like it seemed like Luca on the other hand, like was just like, you don't go to the surface. Okay. But today I want to because I found a clock. Right. <laughs> um, so, that we, you know, with with that, I, I the number I kept coming back to was 79. Um, okay. So I thought that it was like, I thought that it was like, I thought it was really good. I actually cried three times. I can't believe you cried three times and are not giving it more than a 79. I, I think That's it's surprising. I know, I had like, I had such what mixed made feelings you, about what it. What made you cry? So the the one scene in particular was when, oh man, it's like make, make fact, uh -oh. just talking about it, but like when Luca turned on uh, Alberto, oh, like mm -hmm. that moment where he, he like, he's revealed and then like Luca steps back and he like yells like, sea monster. And it was yeah. like, <gasps> No, you didn't. And it was like, oh man, like it that. Hurts. It did hurt. It was what like that was. It was a betrayal. Yeah. It was like that was like. It was like you. You are not only like not having your friends back, but you are lying at the same time. Right. Um, and also maybe not giving uh, Julia enough credit, who really honestly ran with the whole sea monster thing, for the most part, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. And I'm pretty sure that she knew even from that moment that he was also one because right, like, when it right. ultimately was revealed, she was like, I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, not, not fooling anybody. <clears throat> uh, another one that got me really bad was when um, he showed up, uh, when Alberto showed up, like with the blue umbrella. Yeah. You know, that that like whole scene was just, I thought that was just like really cool. Like right. them, you know, kind of coming together to, to like win the thing. And then ultimately when he gives him the, like he tells him that he sold the Vespa to get him the ticket. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the ticket get, which had A113 on it. It did, yes. it did. Yes. Um, uh, so that was that was really cool. That was just another one of those moments where there's like a, a kind of purity to that type of friendship where it's like, um, I mean, maybe, maybe like what you're seeing there is like Alberto showing like, that pure friendship in the end by being like this Vespa, this thing that I've wanted for so long, like I gave up so that you could go and do this thing that you really want to do. Like mm -hmm. putting his needs, like, you know, putting Luca's before before his own in that way. Do you I think there was like a certain amount of like accept, cause like even when they're talking about like, let's get a Vespa and we'll like travel the world. Like you can see why them to them sea monsters who don't know about the surface world while that, why that might seem possible. So sure. like, even as they're saying it, you're like, yeah, but you can't like, like you're not gonna get that far on a Vespa. True, like, it's not a very realistic dream. Like it's a fun dream. Well, but it's like that's even if you get the Vespa, like that's not gonna, like, you know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you no, physically can't do it. Right, 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 and that's the thing too is that like you know you're the reason that Vespas are popular in little towns like that is because they're little towns like that with like right. tight roads. Right. And they're, you know, geographically you're speaking, go. you're not, yeah, you're not going a huge span of space. So there's that. It would almost be like going scuba diving and assuming that you could just follow one coral reef to another forever and ever and ever with no spots of just giant nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like, ocean. Yeah, in between. Um, so it could have been a little bit of that like dawning comprehension of like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, but so anyway, I think that those moments always, mm. they like kind of choke me up. Like I think see that pure support. I think the moment that got me the most choked up was when Luca goes and tries to apologize to Alberto and he sees all the tallies on the wall. Yeah. And they just sort of like descended into like nothingness of like you can just see his like descent into like depression via the tallies and it was like, oh, that is that sucks. It does. Uh, You're right, that was that was a big Because it sort of felt like you sort of knew Alberto was lying the whole time, but like maybe Alberto didn't know he was lying the whole time. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean he is like he's so sunny, he's so optimistic and everything, but like it's when you think of it that way, oh man, I'm like getting kind of chills uh -oh. to think about it this way. But like when when you do, it's almost like that day that Alberto finds him, like is coaching him on how to walk and stuff, like for him, what you didn't witness was the little boy who was left by his father who tallied and tallied and tallied and tallied to the point where he was just leaving like random arbitrary marks on the wall. Right. Full blown depression. And then all of a sudden this kid like, emerges friend. from the water. And yeah. it's like, it's like, he was like his like life raft in a way. Yeah, which is another like, reason why I think he is so jealous of Julia. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, the friendship to him is so critically important. It's like, I've been alone for so long to right. like, finally have this friend. Um, 
So I thought it was, I honestly, I really did think it was great. I super enjoyed it. I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't even see my rating of it as like a criticism, criticism of the movie. It's just really where I landed. Okay. So there you go. An anyway, honest answer. Yes. But oh, guys, wait, final oh, thought. Okay. Did you see other Easter eggs? Oh yes. Um, let's see here. I had, I had a small, <coughs> a small fistful. So I had a one thirteen on the ticket at the yep. end. Um, there was a poster for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I did not. Who, it's like, that's where Nemo gets his name from, Captain Nemo from oh, okay. 20,000. So that was a, a very subtle Nemo reference, I okay. felt like. That's fine. Um, there was no John Ratzenberger. There's not at all, is that confirmed? That is confirmed. Oh, no way. Yep, so wow. he's not in it. That's almost an Easter egg in and of itself. I know, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. only one without him. Right. Um, I was just thinking about that, because like, hey, who could it have been? Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the blue umbrella, I thought was definitely from the short the blue umbrella. Oh, the blue umbrella. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, even the way it like comes through the crowd, it's like you just see like the blue umbrella. Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I got those vibes as well. Um, the other one, there was a Donald Duck in Julia's room. Yes, I actually read about that one. Yeah. And apparently Donald Duck is particularly pop popular in Italy. Oh. So like the fact that it was Donald Duck was specifically okay. fitting to the area. Well, that's fun. Well, here's other sub Easter egg there. The Pixar uh, set designer who worked on Julia's Room was uh, YouTuber Nick Patera, who you might not know, works at Pixar. So he said that was one of his like favorite sets that he ever designed. But if you also look in the room, Julia has a record player and one of the records, uh, the artist on it is Nicola Patera, which is obviously just himself. Amazing. <laughs> which is amazing. Amazing. Like, that's so cool. And if you don't know, he does sing. He did the Triple Dent. Triple Dunk Gum jingle. From and also does lots of really good just Disney covers on his own channel. Yeah, so shout out to Dan Patera. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Just a delightful guy. Delightful person who we have met once a long time ago. He was really cool. Anyways, he was. He was. Uh, but yeah, guys, for our question of the day, what do you think about sort of like how Luca was presented to us on uh, Disney Plus? Did you think that there was any prestige taken from it from it not being Premier Access? Uh, do you think it should have been? Would you have still bought it? Uh, and also, what did you think of the movie? What was your rating? Did you have any thoughts on it? Any criticisms? Did you spot anything that we didn't? Let us know in the towel section down below. Yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already so you don't miss any future Pixar action from us. If you want to see some more uh, Pixar theory action, you can check out this video. I don't know which one we're going to put there, but it's one of our soul theories. Oh, but who is wow. 22? Let's do who is 22. We decided right in the there, spot. Right there. Not planned. Awesome. Not planned. Otherwise, guys, until next week. Bye. Bye.